As a business leader, you're continuously reimagining your company to adapt to the evolving landscape. Radical changes are perhaps your top priority. And to succeed in the COVID-19 world, even more changes are expected. 75% of Fortune 500 CEOs believe this pandemic will accelerate the pace of digital transformation in their organization. Even companies that didn't invest in digital transformation before the pandemic are rushing to make up for lost time to ensure they don't fall behind competitors. But how do you rebuild the airplane while you're still flying it? The first step is to assess your company's current state of digital readiness. However, 93% of CXOs of Fortune 500 companies experience difficulty in assessing their organization's digital readiness. Frost & Sullivan has developed a proprietary framework, the Digital Transformation Maturity Assessment, or DTMA, which helps companies assess their current state of digital readiness. The results are used to strategize their transformation toward the planned future digital state of the company. After embarking on the digital transformation journey, the human side of transformation is important to obtain the desired impact. It's essential to keep measuring company-wide adoption and behavioral change. For this, Frost & Sullivan has devised a C4 framework, compete, collaborate, coach, and celebrate to foster excitement about transformation through competition, promote collaboration and coaching, and celebrate individual and collective successes. Whether you're a future-looking organization, a conglomerate, or a vendor company selling digital solutions to enterprise or B2B customers, visit our website to learn more about our DTMA framework and how it can help you achieve your business objectives.
really enjoy the peer-to-peer -peer connections that we can derive out of the relationships. When I come here every time, I'm engaging with a wide variety of talented people and you're always picking up new ideas and new approaches towards and frameworks particularly. My corporate role changed from being market research to market intelligence and Frost and Sullivan being an amazing resource of information and now having the ability to reach out to colleagues in similar situations and get other perspectives, it helps me to be aware of any blind spots I have. Uh, seeing different people from different perspectives and in different industries and what they're trying to do, I think I learned a lot and things I can get back to my company. The conference has some momentum and the momentum is gathering more and more people who are humble yet capable. There's a vulnerability and a directness that really helps the learning and sharing process. Sixty years ago, Laura Frost and Dan Sullivan had an idea. Get in front of the coming business revolution and equip companies with the tools they need to explore economic trends, new markets, and the emerging technology space. Since then, their company Frost & Sullivan has expanded around the world, with over a thousand analysts providing leading insights to Fortune 1000 companies. We understand the entire business cycle, from the moment a company opens its doors to expansion into a worldwide enterprise. How do you launch a new product? What are the risks of expanding into overseas markets? How do you grow your company and keep costs under control? Whatever the challenge is, Frost & Sullivan has seen it all and can help you make sense of it. Today, we find ourselves in the most uncertain business environment of our lifetimes. But if the last 60 years has taught us something, it's this. Even if you can't predict the future, you can still be ready for it. Are you ready? A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the 2022 edition of Frost & Sullivan and the Energy and Resources Institute Sustainability 4.0 Awards. It's an absolute privilege and honor to have you here with us this evening on this virtual platform. I'm Pamela and I'm your host for this beautiful evening. This year marks a landmark celebration as we celebrate 13 years of fostering the adoption of sustainability in India through the awards program. What started in 2009 as a humble beginning to recognize green manufacturing practices has evolved over the years into a global framework of evaluation and recognition of the companies that have adopted practices that personify the triple bottom line. The need for linkages between an organization's strategy, governance and financial performance and the social, environmental and economic context within which it operates is more critical now than ever before. This award program is aimed to enabling businesses to take more logical and sustainable decisions that ensure long-term stakeholder value. As a prelude to the awards evening, may I invite Mr. Arub Zucchi, Global Managing Partner, Executive Board Member, Frost & Sullivan, who has joined us all the way from California, US, to deliver the welcome address. Welcome to Frost & Sullivan's Sustainability 4.0 Awards Program in 2022. For everyone's benefit, I just want to give you a little bit of a background about this particular program. The Sustainability 4.0 Award and Assessment Program actually started in 2009 by the Manufacturing Process and Consulting Team at Frost & Sullivan. This was earlier known as the Green Manufacturing Excellence Awards and the assessment earlier covered the green planet aspects and covered only manufacturing companies. In the year 2016, Frost & Sullivan partnered with the Energy and Resources Institute, known as Terry, to drive the common agenda and mission till date. And then under the leadership of Rahul Sharma, Head of Manufacturing and Consulting Practice, the Sustainability 4.0 Award Program now conducts assessment based on four pillar model, and they are purpose, partnership, planet, and people. The program later became sector agnostic and started including both manufacturing as well as service-based companies. Safety Excellence Awards and Jury Special Mention Awards also came under the aegis 
of Sustainability 4.0 Awards program. From the very get-go, our mission has been to assist adoption of sustainable development practices in the organizations and recognize the efforts of front runners through a healthy benchmarking process. Business strategy, governance and ethics, risk management, society stakeholder management, customers, supply chain, materials, waste resources, biodiversity, occupational health and safety, human capital management are all covered under the four pillars, pillars of the sustainability model. And this year, like last year, we've added two additional parameters, the sustainability analytics and energy, renewable energy consumption of the award program. The sustainability analytics focuses more on the digital aspects of the organization. Assessment evaluates the existing maturity of the companies in basically three aspects effective data collection, usage of smart analytical tools, and then end-to-end -end visibility in the value chain. The Renewable Energy Consumption Index. The mission of this index is to act as a catalyst to accelerate the deployment within companies operating in different sectors, which indeed would facilitate India Inc.'s transition to RE in alignment with the national climate commitments. JSMA started in 2019, in other words, the Jury Special Mention Award is conferred to those programs that are absolutely best in class. They are scalable and are replicable across all the industry verticals. Through this recognition, Frost & Seven aims to enhance sharing of best practices across the organizations. Safety needs also need to be embedded in every element of a manufacturing business. Our safety excellence model is unique and is based on five parameters over 1,000 point scale, covering an over 100 checkpoints. So with that, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate all the award recipients for today. And I know the level of effort it takes to achieve these goals and benchmarks. I would encourage you to share this success with your teams, with your board, with your partners, but more importantly, with your family, because I know what it takes to get this journey. So wishing you all continued success in the coming years, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Zutschi, for the warm welcome. May I now request Dr. Vibha Dhawan, Director General Terry, to deliver the keynote address. Sir. COVID-19 crisis is revealed clear linkages between an organization's strategy, governance, and finance. The financial performance, the social environment, economic contest, all are important if we are talking about the clear linkages. Sustainability has never been as important as it is now as we are looking at investments in the post-COVID period. I think the recovery will tell us how quickly we can come back at least to the same point and then become better. And that is why planning for tomorrow becomes important. Planning for tomorrow, as the case in India, when we are talking of infrastructure development, we are talking of almost two-thirds of, uh, of infrastructure yet to be built, it becomes extremely important that we take significant steps in terms of sustainability. Jobs, sustainable livelihoods and economic growth are in the heart of global economic recovery and resource efficiency is what binds them together. A green recovery also necessitates minimizing the amount of virgin material use and maximizing recycling of what we call a circular economy. In fact, when we say the waste material, to me, nothing is waste. It is the wasted material. Because if we start using the wasted material as raw material, what we are calling as circular economy, we are not creating problems for ourselves we are not depending on the resources, on the new resources and depleting earth of those. 
thus recycling becomes extremely important for any devel- any any country leave aside the developing world india is unique because when we talk of sustainability or circular economy that is something which is engraved in our dna we believe like nothing is to be wasted if we go back one generation i don't think so we were as materialistic we were not consuming the way we are doing it today nothing was wasted everything was more or less recycled and also the resources that we used were limited they were not as big as what the current generation or even our generation has done it now these are i'll say these are the testing times for the society it is important for us that the earth remains a planet with on which we can live we can thrive we cannot really obtain a uh, uh, afford the way we have abused mother earth in the recent past we also have to see and i am not at all saying that the development has not uh, is not to take place development has to take place but there are means and green it more of a mindset than something which you can either afford or you can't afford happily there has been an awareness and i'll say because in decade before we were talking about climate change as a threat but today we know it's a reality and therefore every stakeholder not just the governments i'll say the general public is also aware of the ill effects of the materialistic way of living and from our witnesses also somewhere our expectation is how green they are how green their processes are and therefore as a consumer also i suspect and of course time will tell us that every stakeholder is going to demand products from from the businesses which are more responsible towards the environment and uh, uh, believe in sustainability now I'll also like to say as I said before that green doesn't mean expensive it's a mindset and therefore we the businesses they have to define their own ecosystem it the sustainability is something which has to be ingrained in the dna of every employee it's right from it's like I'll give you one example when you talk of buildings it is not the ultimate building that you are arti- uh, that you are designing it in the way that it uses less of energy but it is also what kind of building material has been used what kind of lights have been used and how are you managing uh, reducing the heat load how are you meeting whatever little energy requirements still remain so if you want to build a stronger community then every stakeholder must be involved and you also have to create well for each one of them so i gave you example of building so it is also how sustainability bricks were produced the glazing the glass material was produced cement was produced so once you do that then you are bringing every producer of all those products and as a consumer that i know that it is not just a certified building as a conscious stakeholder i have taken into consideration the production cycle the entire value chain ensuring that sustainability was observed we are very glad of terry's partnership with frost and sullivan and the sustainability 400 awards captured the journey of corporates towards sustainability and enable recognition of first movers success breeds more success and nothing amplifies successful behavior more than recognition and sharing of knowledge it's very important for us that whatever good work we have done let's not wait the other person to learn from his or her mistakes let them learn from 
the success that someone else has achieved. So you start from there rather than starting from the scratch. So we at Terry and Frost and Sullivan, we look forward to have you with us on this momentous journey and invite you to join this recognition program focusing on green, clean and profitable business. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dhawan. It is my privilege and honor on behalf of the Executive Committee of the Sustainability 4.0 Awards to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Arup Sukshi, Global Managing Partner, Executive Board Member, Frost and & Sullivan, and Dr. Vibha Dhawan, Director General, the Energy and Resources Institute, who are the thought leaders, industry luminaries, and leaders in their own right. The jury panel chaired by Mr. Ajay Shankar, who is the former secretary, DIP Government of India and distinguished fellow, Terry Chairperson, Mr. Atul Bagai, country head, UN Environment in India. And also, we have joint executive committee members comprising senior colleagues of Rustin Sullivan and Terry. Mr. Arup Zuchi, Global Managing Partner, Executive Board Member, Frost & Sullivan. Mr. Rahul Sharma, VP and Global Head, NPC, Frost & Sullivan. Mr. Vivekananda Bhatt, Associate Director, NPC, Frost & Sullivan. Mr. Girish Sethi, Senior Fellow and Senior Director, Energy, Terry. Dr. Sunil Pandey, Senior Fellow and Director, Environment, Terry. Mr. Arupendra Nath Malik, Vice President, Terry Council for Business and Sustainability. To give us an insight on the methodology of the awards, may I now call upon Mr. Rahul Sharma, VP and Global Head Manufacturing and Process Consulting, Frost & Sullivan. Good evening and welcome to Sustainability Food Auto Awards 2022. This is our 13th edition along with Terry and we are very happy to host you for this edition. As always, our mission is to assist the adoption of sustainable development practice across companies through healthy benchmarking. These awards in fact recognize and reward the companies which have demonstrated the effective deployment of sustainable development practices across their functions in their organization. For Sustainability Ford Auto Awards for this chapter, we had participation from across the sectors in automotive, in engineering, energy and power, metals, cement, textiles, and so on and so forth. Over 75% of the applicants were from large and mega large companies, whereas small and medium enterprises are still sitting on the fence in understanding and implementing sustainability initiatives in their organization. Among applicants, more than 55% had an integrated and structured approach to sustainability, while others had significant opportunities to capitalize by integrating sustainability practices as part of their core business strategy. The assessment model, in fact, has four basic pillars, planet, partnership, purpose, and people. Each of the pillars has 300 points and the organization score out of 1,200 points. Talking about each pillar purpose, we are essentially looking for business strategy where we look for the organization's business strategy and the sustainability strategy. We also look for policy deployments and whether the organizations adapt triple bottom line. On the governance and ethics, we look for values and policies, the regulations and the responsible functions for those regulations, the transparency and accountability. On the risk management side, we are essentially looking for organizations risk register, business risk, social and environmental risk. On the partnership side, we are essentially looking for how the organizations communicate, not just with their customers and suppliers, but also the society at large where they operate. We also look at the stakeholder management, the identification process, the prioritization, and on the supply chain, we are looking for evaluation and assessment of new suppliers, collaboration with suppliers, vendors, retailers, and so on and so forth. On the planet side, we are essentially looking at four dimensions, materials, waste, resources, and biodiversity. We are looking for how the organizations procure those raw materials, how do they discard these hazardous materials, what do they do with their waste emissions and the effluents and the solid waste, and how do they utilize their resources such as energy and water, and do they go for need and the impact assessment on the biodiversity projects. These are few of the certain uh, dimensions that we are looking for under the planet uh, pillar. On people side of it, which is of course very important, we are essentially looking at how the organizations 
take care, of, take care of the occupational health and safety and the human capital management on policies, diversity and inclusion, labor practices, and employee delight dimensions. Now, this is the assessment model and the process on the page where we have four pillars, purpose, partnership, planet, and people with all the 13 sub-parameters right there on the screen. As a point in case, we would like to understand is the total energy used being reported and tracked on a daily, weekly, on a, and on a monthly basis. Now, if this is not tracked at all, the organization scores zero on our assessment model framework. And if the organization is world class, that's where the organization scores 11, and so on and so forth. And that's how the entire scores builds up. This is another reflection where we have six level of maturity, level one, two, and three, where the systems and processes are not talking to each other, beginners where systems and processes have started talking to each other, front runners where the output of the sustainability practices have started showing up, and benchmarks are the Indian companies that should really represent them themselves in the global sustainability arena. These are the uh, entire spread of 13 subparameters under those four pillars that I just spoke about. And this is where we talk about sustainability analytics. And I'm sure you would agree with me, data and analytics and sustainability has play, played a major role post pandemic. That's where we want to understand the sustainability initiatives of an organization from three dimensions. How are they collecting data? Are they collecting data on some digital solutions? or they're still using rudimentary ways such as Excel sheets or uh, SharePoints. We want to understand once they collect the data, what do they do with that data? Do, it, do they do any sort of an analysis on, on the collected data? And once the insights surface, what do, what do they do with those insights uh, in the entire visible value chain? Now, under sustainability, uh, there are uh, 150 and 50 points for smart data collection, intelligent analytics, and visible value chain, respectively. And this is where the organization uh, scores on the sustainability analytics dimension. Now, there are four participation categories, emerging business, medium, large, and mega large, depending on the annual sales of, of the respective organizations. Now, the reason we have done it this way is because we want to create a level playing field for all the organizations and we understand that the emerging business or the medium businesses cannot compete with mega large businesses because of difference in investment and the thought process and of course on these sustainability initiatives. Now these are the certifications and awards. Now the organizations that score up to 725 out of 1200 are in the believers category. The organization that scores up to 800, they are in the challenges category. And the organization that scores up to 875 they are the leaders in sustainability initiatives and the arena in the country. This is where we have two awards in each of those categories, leader and the challenges award, again in four categories of businesses, emerging, medium, large, and mega large. We also have a safety excellence assessment. This is where we have five dimensions to assess an organization on safety parameters, safety management, process safety, equipment safety, behavioral safety and occupational and health. This is where we understand the organization's safety practices. Are they considering about safety and analytics with mega trends in terms of data and analysis, especially in the safety part of the organization? And that's where we want to understand various aspects of safety. Uh, uh, it could be on the equipment side or could be on the uh, process or the people side of it. Now, the assessment team basically comprised of functional consultants from Frost & Sullivan. Uh, there were experts from Terry, and then there were experts from the sectors as well. I would especially like to call out Mr. Santosh Gupta, Mr. Shantanu Roy, Mr. DK Singh, and Mr. Ajit Singh, who, who were the industry expert panel, part of the assessment team doing the physical assessment at all the locations across the country. Now, this is our award program. It is an annual program which starts uh, in January. Uh, we initially start with the self-assessment document, wherein we uh, send the documents to the organization. They have to fill in certain uh, information. The shortlisting happens, followed by a physical on-site assessment at the plant location or at the location of the uh, organization. Now, there are two types of feedback that, that follows after the on-site assessment. First is on the last day of the assessment and then finally a detailed assessment report uh, for, uh, within two to three weeks of the assessment. Then finally there is an award and certification process that happens and that's why uh, we are part of this, that, this program. 
thank you very much and I uh, wish you all the best. Thank you, Mr. Sharma. It is now time to begin the recognition and celebration at the Sustainability 4.0 Awards. Moving over to the first category of awards this evening, safety is one of the most important aspects for any organization to become sustainable. Over the years, organizations have realized how safety can play a crucial role in driving growth as they continue to establish a best-in-class safety system within the organization. Safety excellence assessments were started in 2014 under the aegis of Sustainability 4.0 Awards to bring additional focus on safety practices deployed in an organization. The Frost & Sullivan Safety Excellence Awards framework has been designed for comprehensive evaluation of an organization's safety governance, policies and effective implementation of safety practices. Moving on to the first set of awards for the evening the Safety Excellence Awards. Behavior-based safety systems have been implemented across the hierarchy at this manufacturing plant. Safety is a line function and a culture here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for this year's Safety Excellence Award. First runner-up, Sipla Limited, Vargonagar, Bangalore. May I request company representative, Mr. Daniel Bopuri, Senior Director, Site Head from Sipla Limited, Virgo Nagar to acknowledge the award. Good evening, and uh, it's really it's a wonderful uh, day for Sipla Virgo Nagar, and in fact we are extremely honoured to receive such an important and prestigious award from Frost and Sullivan and Terry Sustainability. For uh, Sipla Virgo Nagar, uh, safety is uh, built in our DNA. That's what I can claim and I can say. And even in the past, we have uh, got a few awards to name them few. Like we have received a prestigious sort of honor uh, for adherence of best practices in uh, 2006 from Karnataka government. And also, we are being categorized as best safety in the industry, uh, again by Karnataka government in 2008. And uh, we have uh, received uh, Unnata Suraksha Puraskara Award from National Safety Council three years, one in 2013, 2015, and 18. And finally, in the year 2019, we also have received Akyunata Suraksha Puraskara Award, which is higher than Unnata Suraksha Puraskara Award. And uh, in 2018, we also have received a Golden Peacock Award on uh, Occupational Health and Safety from Golden Peacock uh, Secretariat. So this is uh, coming in Cross uh, and Sullivan and uh, as first uh, runner-up of safety excellence, we continue our journey and this is not a, we have uh, got it uh, overnight. It is the safety culture which is built up over years and continually we are improving upon and this is what, uh, how and we have improved and we are getting it. We, once again, uh, I, uh, I reiterate that we are extremely honored by this award. And I thank you uh, very much. Thank you so much for the Frost and Sullivan team and Terry Sustainability team. And uh, also, I congratulate my entire uh, Virgo Nagar team for their commitment towards building up this safety belt. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Bopuri. And congratulations to Sipla Limited. This company has built a safe workplace through well-defined and effectively deployed process and equipment safety practice. Commitment to safety system adherence by employees and safety by design 
puts this organization on top of the safety award map. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for this year's Safety Excellence Award, which goes to Charger Power Limited Charger. May I now request company representative Mr. Bhaskar Bhattacharji, Senior Vice President and full-time director, Charger Power Limited, to acknowledge the award. Good evening. On behalf of Aprava Energy and Jhajjar Power Limited, it's my proud privilege to accept the overall winner award for safety excellence. My sincere thanks to the respected jury members of executive committee for recognizing the safety efforts of JPL. Frost and Sullivan and Terry Sustainability 4.0 awards are based on a well-defined framework covering all critical areas of safety management. The assessment model focuses on all aspects of the business and compels us to actually review and re-evaluate everything that we are doing. Well, this is a very proud moment for us in JPL as it took extensive commitment and discipline to safety to reach this stature. As a company, we believe that work safety culture cannot be installed through company regulations alone. It must be a part of the employee's values and principles. On this proud moment, I would like to congratulate my entire team at JPL for their exceptional work in achieving this milestone award. Let me conclude by extending my congratulations to all the award recipients. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bhattacharji, and congratulations to Charger Power Limited. Congratulations to Safety Excellence Award winners. Moving over to the next category of awards, which is the Jury Special Mention Awards. In our continuing effort to promote adoption of sustainable practices, second year in succession, we have the award category that is aimed at recognizing specific programs undertaken by organizations that have resulted in environmental protection, social well-being and economic prosperity within an organization's operation and in community and our scalable and replicable models for the others. To share some insights on the Jury Special Mention Award category, may I now invite Mr. Pankaj Kalyani, Associate Fellow Terry Council for Business Sustainability on the screen, please. Hi, good evening everyone. Our partnership with Trust and Sullivan clearly illustrates that the business are internalizing the paradigms of sustainability for success in the market and for creating positive externalities in the communities they are operating, which is also essential for ensuring a sustainable future of India. Managing in this volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous, that is VOCA world, the businesses requires factoring in of the sustainability and climate risk scenarios and associated implications within their businesses and sector. And in this journey, Businesses are not just focusing on their operations, but also looking at the entire value chain while balancing their economic, environmental and social performance in order to create long-term stakeholder value and growing business profitability over the long run. If you look at the realm of what do you do with the profits made, businesses are now increasingly focusing on the basic question of how you make those profits, both in letter and spirit. And slowly and steadily moving towards the business models, they are focused on the four P's of sustainability, that is purpose, partnership, planet, and people. In this context, Frost and Sullivan and Terry introduced the Jury Special Mention Awards 2019 in, uh, in 2019 to recognize the programs and initiatives that are innovative, scalable, and replicable across industry verticals. The organization may not, high, may not be high on the maturity with respect to the sustainability 4.0 models, but doing exemplary work on, the, on, on a specific program focused on innovation. And these each program in the Jury Special Mention Awards are evaluated on the basis of four parameters that are program design, sustainability relevance, scalability and replicability, and additionality. The best program voted by the jury receives the Jury Special Mention Award. When talking about the uh, program and initiatives, you have to look out, look what in this context we uh, what it qualifies as a program. So, program here is defined as a set of strategically identified interventions, initiatives aimed at achieving stated goals and objectives within a specific time frame 
uh, sequence and budget. These initiatives identified through an complex, inclusive and comprehensive planning process result into the environment protection, the social well-being and the economic prosperity of the organization's operation and in the community. We see that a program may comprise of the investment as well as the infrastructure development initiatives, a reform or non-investment non initiatives or a combination of both. Interventions under a CSR mandate are also eligible, subject to the condition that they exhibit company's efforts in designing interventions and are regularly monitored, verified and evaluated for effectiveness, showcasing demonstrates, uh, demonstrable socio-economic uh, impacts. On the process overview, the Jury Special Mention Award uh, is broadly a two-step process. The first one being the submission of the program applications by participating companies and the team of Frost and Sullivan and Terry colleagues interacting with the relevant teams of companies over the virtual platform. The second step involves the company representatives presenting their programs to jury over the uh, virtual platform and jury deliberating on each of these programs and eventually vote for the best program to be awarded at the award. The jury as a part of their evaluation process deliberates on all the shortlisted program based on the four evaluation parameters and suggested checkpoints under each of them and the presentation by the company representatives. The jury also provides the geopolitical and legal insights and the perspectives on the shortlisted programs. And the last step includes the voting for the best program, which is innovative, scalable, and replicable across the industry verticals. So the evaluation parameters are located under four specific headers. And these four parameters are uh, design, sustainability relevance, scalability and replicability, and additionality. In the design part, a uh, program is being uh, looked from the lens of the, the focus of the program and what was the context driving force of the, behind those uh, behind the program. The involvement of senior management in the program and the role of in, involvement of stakeholders, uh, the monitoring and review mechanism, the demonstrated benefits vis-a-vis -vis the input cost, both in terms of financial and non-financial. Coming to the sustainability relevance part, uh, the, the jury deliberates on the program's linkage with the company's materiality matrix and the overall sustainability strategy of the company. Uh, we also take in consideration of the stakeholder communication and the feedback and follow-up actions. The risks and challenges identified and what was the mitigation plan in, uh, to, uh, to mitigate that. And the new business opportunities, if any, arising out of implementation of this program. The third part is the scalability and replicability part. Uh, in here, the process of the program implementation is in focus, where the impacts as well as the outcomes of the programs are considered. What were the success factors for the program? What didn't work? And how, uh, how, how do you deal with that? And the challenges which came in the program implementation stage uh, and in achieving the envisioning outcomes and measures taken for uh, overcoming that. The fourth point is the additionality, which is uh, termed as going beyond business as how your your benefit was not limited to the organization but there were some co benefits associated and the overall uh, apart from your boundary uh, the geographical location that the company is operating and the local priority is being take being considered for from uh, that lens is also being considered the alignment is more important with uh, two things one is with the stakeholders and the business objective of the company and second is the alignment with the existing ongoing uh, programs and similar initiatives in india as well as internationally uh, the jury for the jury special mention awards 2022 edition comprises of two eminent names uh, one is mr ajay shankar former secretary dipp government of india and the other eminent name is Mr. Atul Bagai, Country Head for United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, India. Thank you all of you for being a part of the award ceremony and celebrating the success of the program and companies in their sustainability journey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kalyani. Now I would request Mr. Ajay Shankar, Chairperson of Jury Panel, Jury Special Mention Award for this special remarks. Can we have Mr. Ajay Shankar on screen, please? I would like to begin by thanking Frost and Sullivan and Terry for giving me the privilege of chairing the jury this year. 
it was a very difficult call choosing among such outstanding entries and looking at the quality of entries one felt really in well, one sense proud that india is at a certain inflection point where so much innovation is being attempted so much good innovation is happening and there is an emerging ecosystem where people are competing and trying to do innovation which helps them their business and their society i was also glad to see that the the global imperative of uh, climate change and sustainability has seeped into our system and firms are trying to do some good work in that area which which offers great hope for not only india but for the rest of the world because given our sheer size what we do for climate change and sustainability will make a huge difference to mankind i would like to appreciate the work of all those who applied and sought recognition my congratulations to those who won the prize and those who were runners up but also congratulations to all the others who participated because all the entries were just superb and it was not easy taking a call so so the jury took had to make an effort to choose the winner and the runners up so my my best wishes and greetings to all those who competed those who got the prizes and i do hope that next year many more will compete and try to get these awards so so once again appreciation to the frost and sullivan and the terry team thank you thank you mr shankar for your insights moving on to the jury special mention awards ladies and gentlemen now please put your hands together for jury special mention award runner up which goes to JSW Cement Limited congratulations team for this recognition now may i request company representative to please say a few words good evening ladies and gentlemen uh first of all uh thank you uh, for recognizing us uh, for the product in video blast uh, we are happy to receive this award uh this product and video blast is a environment friendly product uh, this is based on utilizing uh, waste raw materials and one of the beauty about the product is that this is air cured so after plastering there is no water which is needed for curing uh this also uh, doesn't use reverse sand uh that way uh, the product is socially and environmentally uh, friendly uh we really uh, appreciate this recognition and uh thank Terry and Frost and Sullivan and all the jury members uh, for recognizing this award thank you happy congratulations to the team for winning this accolade now please put your hands together for jury special mention award winner which goes to Bella Century a unit of Century Textile and Industries Limited congratulations guys now may i request company representative to please say a few words a very good evening to all i am extremely delighted to receive this prestigious award on behalf of Bella Century thank you first and sullivan and the jury members for acknowledging our effort this award is very special to us as it reflects our commitment to our sustainability Our case study was based on upcycling of crop residue whereby agricultural waste is converted into fiber yarn and fabrics suitable for textile application. This can be game changer for textile industry drive towards sustainability. This award is a result of hard work, passion and dedication of our team members. Thank you team and congratulations. I am also extremely grateful to our senior management team who continues to motivate us to focus on sustainability and innovation. Our journey towards sustainability, however, will continue. Thank you, and have a great day. I hope everyone feels inspired by the dazzling achievements of these companies. Before we move on to our next round of awards, we have a little surprise for all our viewers. Joining us in this entertainment break is India's first stand artist. He has been seen on the small and big screen and his videos have gone viral with over 10 million views. Wow. Viewers, let's welcome Rahul Arya with a round of applause. 
The pace of global warming is accelerating, and the scale of impact is devastating. Time of action is limited. We are approaching a tipping point beyond which the opportunity to reverse the damage of CO2 emissions will disappear. For Frost and Sullivan, over the past 60 years, growth is not just an objective. It's a commitment that has helped businesses to achieve sustainable growth. In making this sustainable growth as the center point of different ecosystems, Frost and Sullivan's Sustainability Award has played an integral role. An assessment that enables businesses to make more logical and sustainable decisions that enable long-term stakeholder value. A nation that destroys its soils, destroys itself. Forests are the lungs of our land, purifying the air and giving fresh strength to our people. A legacy of 12 years, comprising a team of the best manufacturing and process consultants with a core sustainability background have provided participants valuable insights and enriching experience in helping their journey as they march toward operational excellence. Conservation is a state of harmony between men and land. We have to hold ourselves a accountable for our actions. And that's how we're going to protect the Earth. Businesses across the globe share the most precious asset, planet Earth. It's important for organizations from different sectors to work collectively in unearthing the risks and create a sustainable business ecosystem. Look after the land, and the land will look after you. Destroy the land, and it will destroy you. The Sustainability 4.0 will also additionally evaluate how companies are effectively using analytics in their sustainability management.
the framework includes four key parameters such as purpose, people, partnership, and planet, along with 13 sub-parameters on a 1,200-point scale with 125 checkpoints that will decide the winner of Sustainable Business of the Year. Plans to protect air and water, wilderness and wildlife are in fact plans to protect man. Reducing our levels of consumption will not be a sacrifice, but a bonus if we simply redefine the meaning of the word success. Sustainability with economic value creation. Frost and Sullivan's Sustainability Awards envision to help organizations in India to achieve COP26 objectives by building a safer environment and stronger community. To the main awards of the evening and shall start with the Certificate of Merit in the Believers category, followed by the Certificate of Merit in the Challengers category. Here we have two companies in Believers category, JSW Cement Limited, Mumbai, Prince Pipes and Fittings Limited, Mumbai. We wish them all the best in their sustainability journey. Moving on to the next Certificate of Merit under Challengers category. Here we have two companies in this category. The company in this category have closely competed for the Challengers Awards and have missed it narrowly. We wish them good luck for the next year. Capital and Services India Private Limited, Gurgaon. Nextra Data Limited, Nextra by Airtel. Congratulations to the meritorious company in the Challengers Certificate category. As we move on to the Challengers Awards this evening, Let's keep our fingers crossed to know the winners. This unit has a well-rounded approach to sustainability, encompassing areas like energy conservation, water recycling, socio-economic development of the communities around the planet, and empowerment of the employees. The first of the challenges award among the medium business SMCG sector goes to Hindustan Coca-Cola Beverages Private Limited, Shrikala Hasti. May I now invite Mr. Venkateshwara Rao, AVP, South Cluster Manufacturing Head, for his acceptance speech. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I would like to thank Ross and Sullivan for recognizing and awarding our Srikala Hasti factory with Challengers Award on Sustainability 4.0 under FMCG sector. With immense pleasure and honor, I am accepting this award on behalf of the HCCB employees and associated partners working with Shri Kalahasti unit. I am really very proud of my Shri Kalahasti team for, for their continuous drive towards excellence in every aspect of manufacturing and sustainability. We have 16 owned manufacturing facilities across the country and Shri Kalahasti unit clearly stands out to be the best 
manufacturing facility in each and every aspect of uh, manufacturing sustainability and supply chain thanks to frost and sullivan for partnering with us in this journey of creating the best world class manufacturing facility and i would also like to thank the assessors and the executive committee for taking out their time and providing us inputs and feedback with that ladies and gentlemen thank you all once again thank you mr rao congratulations to hindustan coca cola beverages private limited shri kala hasti now we are moving on to challenges awards in mega large business category the company's manufacturing and supply chain operations are built upon sustainability considerations making it amongst their top priorities as well with focus efforts and well defined metrics to evaluate their progress on sustainability they have a motivated and passionate workforce that constantly challenge their own achievements the company being awarded under challenges category among mega large business automotive sector goes to tvs motor company limited chennai may i now invite mr k n radhakrishnan director and ceo tvs motor company limited chennai to share his experience and views tvs motor took part in the sustainability 4.0 awards assessment by frost and sullivan and terry and we are very happy to note that we are recognized as challengers in mega large business and automotive sector as a socially responsible organization we are strongly committed to sustainability initiatives and this is in line with our vision which is to transform the quality of life of people across the world by providing mobility solutions that are exciting responsible sustainable and safe this structured assessment framework has provided us lot of insights to sustain and improve it is also motivating to focus more towards purpose planet people and partnerships we express our profound acknowledgement to the assessors for this in depth assessment we would like to thank all our employees who are part of this journey we look forward to progressing in our sustainability journey towards becoming leaders in subsequent assessment thank you mr radhakrishnan and many congratulations to tvs motor company limited now moving on to challengers awards in mega large business category service sector Sustainability is deep rooted in the culture and ethos of this company which is effectively ingrained and cascaded to all its operations. The involvement of employees in driving sustainability initiatives at this facility is remarkable. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the first runners up award under challenges category among mega large business. Service sector goes to Messrs Sem Corp Energy India Limited Gurgaon May I now invite Mr Ramesh Raman Plant Head Sem Corp Energy Limited Gurgaon to say a few words Good evening ladies and gentlemen I'm delighted and honored to receive prestigious Frost and Civilian Terry Sustainability 4.0 Award 2022 On behalf of Sem Corp I thank the organizers the members of the jury and the executive committee for selecting some cause for this award we are truly humbled with this recognition the road to this recognition would have not been paved had it not been for the commitment efforts of our team across verticals within the business unit safety is the core of our operation it is a journey in our endeavor to create a world class hsc standard and sustainability practices at workplace i am sure the members of this jury and many of you here today are already familiar with these efforts so without taking any more time from this evening event i would like to sum up our various endeavors by saying that our purpose is to make the planet more sustainable by collaborating with the right people and build a partnership for a sustainable tomorrow on behalf of some cop colleagues i would like to thank once again for this recognition have a great evening thank you all Thank you Mr Raman. Congratulations to Semcorp Energy India Limited. 
This company is the first successful corporate to enter the business of solid waste management and simultaneously making it a sustainable business model. It enables other organizations from varied industry sectors to help them meet their sustainability goals and objectives. Moreover, this company is also well placed to showcase and demonstrate how integrating sustainability into business and operations create value in the long run for society at large, along with creating environmental benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the winner under Challenges Awards in Mega Large Business Service Sector. And the award goes to RE Sustainability Limited Hyderabad. I would like to request Mr. Masood Malik, Chief Executive Officer, RE Sustainability Limited, to kindly come up on screen to say a few words. Good evening, friends. I'm absolutely delighted to accept the Frost & Sullivan and Terry Sustainability 4.0 Challengers Award. I accept this award with gratitude on behalf of the 20,000 strong re-sustainability family. My wonderful colleagues who are working every day and every night across 100 locations globally to make our communities, our institutions and our industries more sustainable. Thank you, Jury, for this acknowledgement of our efforts. At ReSustainability, we are on a journey, one that is not easy and probably has never been travelled before at this scale. Your encouragement means the world to us. Thank you so much. Now we are moving on to the next set of awards under Challenger category. This organization is the only pharmaceutical sector company in India to have become signatory to the Sustainable Market Initiative. Terra Carta a charter that puts sustainability at the heart of the private sector. Companies patient awareness initiatives like Berok Sindagi and Drishti have received huge response, which is highly appreciable. The only award under challenger category in mega large business, Pharma Sector goes to Sipla Limited Mumbai. I would now like to request Mr. Rajesh Vasudevan, Vice President EHS and ESG Sipla Limited, to come up on screen and say a few words. We at CIPLA are happy to win the Frost & Sullivan Award. Frost & Sullivan Assessment helps us to look back, pause and reflect on the work what we have done on sustainability so far. There is a structure in f and Assessment and at the end of the assessment, what we get is a clear direction on where we have to go from here. The advantage with the assessment is the expertise that Frost & Sullivan bring on the table and also a complete a data and evidence-driven approach. The areas for improvements and the good practices are clearly articulated in the assessment report. I would say Frost & Sullivan assessment is like a beacon from a lighthouse, ensuring that when we stray from the path, we can quickly correct our course. Thank you, Mr. Vasudevan, and many congratulations to Sipla Limited. A big round of applause to all the award winners in the Challenges category. The next category of awards to be announced is the Leaders category, and we are just one step away from announcing the Sustainable Corporate and the Sustainable Factory of the Year Awards recipients. This unit has a well-rounded approach to sustainability, encompassing areas like energy conservation, water recycling, socio-economic development of the communities around the plant, and empowerment of employees. The first award under leaders category among medium business process sector goes to UPL Limited Unit 4 Halal. Please put your hands together as we welcome Mr. Binoy A. Parekh, UPL Limited, Unit 4, Halol, to say a few words. Good evening, good evening to all the sustainable leaders out here. I am really feeling proud, obliged, uh, standing in front of you people, taking this prestigious award on behalf of UPL 4 unit. And this is only because the management focused towards the sustainability which has helped us to improve and keep on improving, becoming more and more sustainable. And I would also like to thank the people, my team, who is working day and night towards the improvement for the sustainability, or else I would have never been here taking this award. 
so thank you once again to each and every people who has contributed towards this subscribe ready and also i would like to thanks frost and sullivan and terry team to really come to the unit and check our sustainability growth and always help us to grow and improve on this point so thank you thank you even after being a small unit of uh, upl group uh, they have always been kind and always been supportive and help us to grow towards the sustainability thank you so much once again and just to add on to all the leaders out here together we can make this world more and more sustainable more and more uh, you know better place to live by just focusing on this small small sustainability changes and improvement thank you so much thank you mr parik congratulations to upl limited unit 4 the next plant coming up to receive the award is the first zero liquid discharge agrochemical unit in india This plant has an extensive focus on energy efficiency and has achieved 50% reduction in specific power consumption over last 3 years. The second award under leaders category among large business process sector goes to UPL Limited Unit 2 Ankleshwar. Please put your hands together as we welcome Mr. Vikas Garg, AI Head India UPL Limited Unit 2 Ankleshwar to say a few words. Good evening. I would like to thank Frost and Sullivan and Terry Sustainability 4.0 for bestowing this award to Unit 2 on Kalesh. I would like to accept this award on behalf of employees of Unit 2 who have worked tirelessly on sustainability over the few years. At UPL, we take pride in working on new technologies to continually reduce our footprint. We also are committed to achieving a net zero by 2040, which is part of our overall program. I would also like to congratulate the other winners. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gar. Congratulations to UPL Limited Unit to Ankleshwar. Now we are moving on to the next set of awards in mega large business category FMCG sector. Snacking made right. The Mondelez team is super aligned with company's vision in making a sustainable snacking company. Its holistic sustainability strategy combined with data and analytics to adopt sustainability in every function of the organization is the key to its success. This also shows in the organizational culture that Mondelez stands for. The only award under leaders category among mega large business FMCG sector goes to Mondelez India Foods Private Limited Mumbai. Please put your hands together as we welcome Mr. Shomik Gupta HSC Lead India Mondelez India Foods Private Limited to say a few words. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Mondelez, I would like to thank the jury members of Frost and Sullivan and Terry for recognizing the efforts being taken by Mondelez and select our organization for the prestigious Leaders Award, Mega Large Business in the sector. This is indeed a very very proud moment for all of us. At the same time. contribution by our mondelez colleagues business partners and consumers towards the organization sustainability pillar is also well acknowledged and appreciated i would also like to thank the organization from frost and sullivan and terry for anchoring this wonderful assessment by noteworthy gratitude to the assessors who are physically come to the for the assessment and had a very engaging and interactive session with the corporate as well as the site team mondelez has a long ambitious long term goal for environmental social and governance area that are critical to our long term success we as a snacking company believe that one delicious snack can make a moment more meaningful and when the right snack for the right moment are made the right way time and again we believe that they can be more meaningful part of our brighter future for the people and our planet once again thank you very much thank you mr gupta Congratulations to Mondelez India Foods Private Limited to be a world leader in business that enrich lives and contribute to the infrastructure development of nations through the creation of sustainable value with a current project portfolio of 20434 megawatts the company is one of the largest renewable energy companies in India the company promises India a brighter cleaner and greener future company designs constructs owns runs and maintains utility scale grid connected solar and wind farm projects in accordance with the group's 
Growth with Goodness concept. The final award under leaders category among mega large business service sector goes to Adani Green Energy Limited Ahmedabad. Heartiest congratulations to the team for winning this accolade. Over to the team for their acceptance speech. Uh, very good evening to all of you. We are overwhelmed with gratitude to have been awarded with the Frost and Sullivan and Terry Sustainability Leaders Award under the category that we fall in, that is the mega large business service sector category. Adani Green Energy Limited is a pure play renewable energy company and we own one of the world's largest renewable energy portfolios. And we continue our stride with the ambitious aim to achieve 45 gigawatt of renewable energy capacity by the year 2030. Our long-term value creation effort for stakeholders drives our business performance and the growth. We are aligned with the global reporting frameworks and have been transparently disclosing our ESG practices and climate targets with all our stakeholders. With our robust ESG governance framework, which is headed by the board level committee, the corporate responsibility committee, we have set up processes and procedures in place for identifying climate related risks and opportunities. As we believe energy transition is a great opportunity for us. We also work for enhancing the diversity, grievance redressal, and ensure safety and well being of all our people. We strive to achieve India's decarbonization goal by generating and supplying renewable energy while inculcating sustainability at every step. And at the last, we imbibe our motto that is growth with goodness. Sustainability is not a mere obligation for us, but a priority and the way we do business. And once again, a big thanks to all of you. Many congratulations to Adani Green Energy Limited. Moving on to the creme de la creme of the evening. There are three Apex Awards of the year. The first Apex Award is Sustainable Factory of the Year Award. Driven by a strong focus on sustainable development through a well-designed Vedanta sustainability framework and with an ably supportive and agile team to execute at plant level. This factory at Korba has imbibed sustainability into whatever they do. This plant has overcome various challenges to not only ensure smooth operations but a positive and healthy work environment as well. May I call upon company representative Mr. Abhijit Patil, CEO and whole time director at Bharat Aluminium Company Limited, Korba, to give his acceptance speech for receiving Sustainable Factory of the Year Award. Ladies and gentlemen, let us rise and give a standing ovation to Bharat Aluminium Company Limited, Korba Factory. I would like to extend my heartiest congratulations to Forst and Sullivan and Terry for successfully organizing the 13th edition of Sustainability 4.0 Awards 2022. The initiative rightly highlights the need for linkage between an organizational strategy, governance and financial performance and the social environment and economy context within which the organization operates. The Sustainability Award in current times are playing an impactful role in the global ESG framework by enabling business to take more logical and sustainable decisions and solutions that ensure a long-term stakeholder value. I hope that these awards are celebrated globally and business adopt the learnings from them to establish a sustainable future for all and work towards the global vision of leaving no one behind. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pati. Congratulations to Bharat Aluminium Company Limited. It's time for the penultimate Apex Award for the evening. Here we have two companies being awarded for first runner-up position, one each from manufacturing and process sector. Moving on to the first award, Sustainable Corporate of the Year Award. The first runner-up being in the oil exploration business, the organization's manufacturing operations are quite complex, yet sustainable. It deploys environmentally friendly technologies and process consumables. 
Companies' exemplary community engagement and development initiatives have helped in transforming socio-economic development of extremely backward region of Barmer in Rajasthan. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give a standing ovation to this year's Sustainable Business of the Year, first runner-up award winner, Kane Oil and Gas Vedanta Limited, Kurugram. May I now request Mr. Mandeep Naram, President RJ Oil Kane Oil and Gas Vedanta Limited, to share his experience. I would like to thank Frost and Solomon and uh, uh, Terry for this uh, the award format. It was uh, a very well organized and very well planned uh, format, uh, wherein the entire operations of the company was covered, covering the four critical uh, criteria which was around uh, people, uh, partnership, uh, uh, planet and the purpose. The gaps and the identification of uh, the improvement areas which has come up from this assessment, they are not limited only to uh, a short term uh, uh, initiatives or gaps. I think so it is more from overall responsibility of any organization towards uh, making sure that you know we operate uh, responsibly. So thanks uh, for conducting this assessment. Thank you, Mr. Naram. And kudos to Kane Oil and Gas Vedanta Limited for their achievement. Now we are moving on to the second company being awarded at first runner-up position. This organization has opted for a sustainable growth as its core model to conquer the market leadership. Its endeavor is to constantly raise the bar and strive to match the global's best on all sustainability metrics. This organization is also highly committed towards its social responsibility. Its community engagement program spans over 11 states, 676 villages and 23 urban slums. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give a standing ovation to this year's Sustainable Business of the Year first runner-up winner, Hindako Industries Limited, Mumbai. May I now request Mr. Bibhu Mishra, President and Head Manufacturing Center of Excellence, Hindako Industry Limited, Mumbai, to share his experience. On behalf of Hindalco employees, I thank Frost and Sullivan and Terry for this award. The quality of sustainability war and its spread across our units are attributable to the strategic thinking of Hindalco leadership team. Our work on green energy, solid waste management and biodiversity is being appreciated by the peers in industry. We love it when someone visits our units and appreciates the sustainability work. I welcome you all to help us in our journey towards a greener Indalco. Thank you, Mr. Mishra, and kudos to Hindalco Industry Limited for their achievements. And finally, the one award that we all have been waiting for. Sustainable Corporate of the Year Award, a leader in digital powered business process and an architect of lean digital enterprise. This company passionately serves hundreds of clients globally, including one fifth of Fortune Global 500. Sustainability for them is not a destination, but an endless journey, which is embodied in their mantra of generating impact, social responsibility, people diversity and inclusivity form the core part of their business viability. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in celebrating this year's Apex Award, Sustainable Corporate of the Year Award with a standing ovation to Genpact India Private Limited Gurukram. We are now invite Ms. Vidya Srinivasan, Senior Vice President, Infrastructure and Risk, Genpact India Private Limited to address the gathering. Good evening. On behalf of GenPAC, it's an honor to accept the Apex Award of the Sustainable Corporate of the Year. I would also like to thank Frost and Sullivan and Terry for organizing these awards. The process of going through the selection and uh, evaluation has been a very learning process for us. 
it will be our effort to continue to improve our posture on sustainability thank you thank you mr nivasan congratulations to jetpack india private limited Frost and Sullivan the Energy and Resources Institute and the Executive Committee of Sustainability 4.0 Awards congratulates all the winners I would now request Mr Arupendranath Malik Vice President Terry Council for Business Sustainability to give the vote of thanks We come to the end of an enriching 2 hours of deliberation celebrating leadership of industries on sustainability strategies and practices Today we have witnessed an array of Indian companies representing diverse sectors participate with us over the last few years. With 360 degree of all elements of sustainable development that is purpose, people, partnership and planet, we provide a set of services and forums for knowledge sharing, learning as part of the FNS Steady Sustainability 4.0 2022 edition. Colleagues We have internalized the lessons that the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us. Keeping the the pandemic behind us, this year all the assessments were undertaken through physical site visits and in-person interaction. And today we are leveraging digital platforms to connect with you at this banquet event. Today's banquet marks the closure of the 2022 edition of assessments, which ran over the last nine months, involving assessors from Frost, from Terry. and the industry experts many congratulations to all the companies who have joined the sustainability 4.0 awards hall of fame this hall of fame today assumes significant importance not just for the country but also for the global community colleagues today as we connect with you is an app very very appropriate time just a month ago in november in sharm el sheikh egypt the world witnessed the conclusion of the united nations annual climate change conference the cop27 and a fortnight ago beginning the month of december india has assumed the g20 presidency the issues like sustainable solutions for climate change sustainable energy transition inclusive global value chains employment generation social protection skilling are all at the center stage to shape future development pathways All these are integral components of our 4P model. Herein, our Hall of Fame will serve as leadership examples for the world to see on how to implement the principles of sustainable development in the true spirit of letter and action. The year 2022 marked the fourth edition of the Jury Special Mention Award category that aims to recognize programs or initiatives that have resulted in environmental protection, social well-being. economic prosperity within an organization's operation and in the community thereby fulfilling the organization's commitment towards sustainable development a special thanks to all the jury panel chaired by mr ajay shankar and other jury panel members i'm glad today that several colleagues from the indian industry and our partners have attended the session today you can access several resources materials documents reports and information about our work and our value proposition on sustainability on the websites of Frost and Terry. Last, I'd like to thank all colleagues who have put in efforts to to put together today's banquet. Mr. Rahul Sharma, Mr. Vivekanand Bhatt, uh, Apurvanand Pallavi, Sutanuka from the Frost team, uh, Pankaj Kalyani, Pooja Kumar from the Terry team. And of course, another set of colleagues who are working at the back end. to manage the IT infrastructure the social media and the other communication means to enable all of us to connect at this banquet today thank you for being with us today we hope you enjoyed the sessions just like ourselves hosting you and we intend to bring to you similar engaging sessions to you including the, the 2023 edition of the sustainability 4.0 awards i'm signing off and i look forward to your participation in our upcoming engagements thank you bye bye and have a great day Thank you, Mr. Malik. The Executive Committee of Sustainability 4.0 Awards would also like to acknowledge the unrelenting efforts of the manufacturing and process consulting practice 
at Frost and Sullivan and team at Terry for tirelessly working towards taking this program to newer heights and continually challenging the industry. We appreciate and acknowledge your year-long hard work that has made Sustainability 4.0 Awards the most preferred award in the country. Frost and Sullivan and Terry once again congratulate all the winners. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for this wonderful and insightful event.